Okay, I've cut a piece of uh, fiberglass and I've mixed up some epoxy where I poured it in the cup and we're going to mix it now. 50-50, make sure you mix it real good. And we're going to go over the... I usually, usually do two coats on the nose. The first coat is uh, put on, let set, tack up, then it's sanded smooth and I put another coat on. Not uh, of the glass, just the resin. Whether that's the right way or not, I don't know. That's how I do it. <clears throat> Been a while since I built one of these style airplanes. The later airplanes that I've been building don't have any of the glass on the nose. Anyway, what I do is I put a liberal amount of uh, resin on the wood itself. Kind of keep in mind that these big tractor style engines, the Super Tiger 60, they, they have quite a bit of vibration, so that's why the nose has to be built solid. The motor mounts are tied into the wing, the firewall's tied into the wing. It has a, a big stiffener block between the maple motor mounts, a half inch stiffener block cross crossways to help dampen some of the vibration. This one here I did not use uh, any hardwood doublers. I used a Randy Smith method of uh, well these fuselage sides are 332nd and then then carbon fiber and then a eighth inch doubler And that's how the nose is constructed on this airplane. In the old days it was 16th inch plywood. I've even seen 8th inch plywood, but 16th inch plywood. These are going to have those big, nice, round wing fillets on it, too. I'm going to show you how I did those on my Continental XL. When I built the XL in, uh, I guess it was 05 or 06, we didn't have video on the forum, we just had pictures, and I posted some pictures, but pictures really don't do it justice, you need to see how it's done, and it is difficult to do and make look right. Um, I, I did see an airplane at the Nats this year that had them on there, and they were done correctly. They're not easy to do correctly. Most of the time when you see them, you can see they start and stop. So now I just lay the glass over the top of it. Pull all the wrinkles out. Time, man, what's going on? The compound curve. There it is. Then, if you go to AutoZone, Harbor Freight, or a dozen different body shops, or whatever body shop supply places, you can get yourself some Bondo spreaders. Have you ever cleaned the edge up? Make sure it's nice. And we got some wrinkles here we got to get out. so I don't have it in my way. 
This extra piece on the bottom is for the cowl. And we'll come back in an hour and, uh... Oh, I had scissors. Don't want to cut glass at all. Yeah, we'll try a razor blade. Very graceful doing this. <laughs> there we go. Okay. If you listen, I'm playing my tapes in the background so I can see what I've missed. Smooth it out, get all the wrinkles out. A few hours we'll come back and, and coat it again. In the early 90s, I used to do a complete finish like this, and it was relatively light. Glass on the nose, but uh, just z epoxy over the whole airplane. Remember, the smoother you can get this on, the less sanding you have to do later. And there's plenty of sanding to do without giving yourself some more work. Wipe the excess off on a paper towel. And a good nose on an airplane is just absolutely beautiful when it's done right. When the spinner blends in, the shape of the spinner blends into the shape of the nose and there's no dents in the, in the nose. This is done before the silk span. There's no silk span on the fuselage on the back half yet. We might get to that tonight, but if not, that'll be tomorrow for sure. Because I want to make sure the nose is complete before I go on any, go on any farther. Uh, when you work, try not to make mistakes. I mean, if you do, everybody makes mistakes, but when you do, fix them right away. Don't, don't go on without fixing them, because in the end, it's a disaster. All my finishing techniques that I use have been handed down. I, I don't really have any unique way of doing things. I do everything 1950s style.
Okay, well, that's it. We got that all to lay down perfectly flat. Let it dry, and then I come back with this emery board. And on an angle, I file that uh, angle there, and it cuts the uh, fiberglass right off without an issue. So we had a piece left over, and we have the cowl here, so we'll do the cowl. I hope that piece was big enough for the cowl. And it is. This normally becomes a little messy because there's not any real way to hold it. And you have to do it in two pieces. You can't do it in one. Oh no. <laughs> Already got goobers going down in the bolt hole. Be gluing the, the bolts in there. Can't have that. There we go. Get the bolt out of it. Everything was sanded with 320. I really don't think you have to go any any finer than 320. I've had people tell me, well, you got to sand it with 600, or you got to sand it with 1200. Or I don't think sand and lacquer that smooth at the beginning is a good idea. There again, it's entirely up to you. There are some other people who finish rather well. Phil Granderson is probably the one of the top finishers. Billy has his own method. Kind of like whatever works for you. I'm not saying that uh, my way of finishing is the only way or the best or whatever. There's a million different ways to do things. I, ha I haven't won a concourse trophy yet. So I by far am not perfect at it. Of course, that's more of a popularity contest than anything. And I am not popular. But who gives a crap? <laughs> okay. I got the uh, cow painted with the resin. And we'll put the glass on it. Well, somebody's messaging me on the forum, or I just got an email, or something. I have alerts set up, so when you message me through the day, I do get them right away. I know within just a few moments of you hitting send, my phone will alert me that there's a message for me on the forum. Boy, it's being difficult. There it is. This might take a couple of a couple of tries to get this right because of all the compound curves. I just use my fingers to push it down up in the nose area. <clears throat> and I'll take my little spatula and see if I can get it smooth. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Muy bueno.
Mucho trabajar for my Spanish speaking brethren out there. And para mí, uh, necesito en aprender en español para mí de los años El Codos México, which is San Luis Rio Colorado, Radio Mundo Uno. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we'll set this aside to dry. It's gonna, it's gonna take some finessing on this anyway. And we used about, I'd say, half an ounce of the uh, Z epoxy. But here's one of those steps I would not, for longevity, I would not leave out. The glassing of the nose and the glassing of the cow. And I'll get the inside on the next go around. So we're going to have to wait a couple hours for all this to dry before we go any farther. So we'll see you in the Today is a demo on DC 540. DC 540 is a product that uh, is from Colorline Napa. It's not the same as Duplicolor. It's the best primer I found for dope and I'm going to show you why. Shake the can real good. Get the part that you're ready to, to paint. And uh, I just hold it in my hand. And you give it a coat. I'm not sure if this is going to come out super good on camera. But I want to show you the speed of which that you can finish with. And what the DC 540, I'm hoping that it shows you what it's supposed to look like. And the rapid dry of this. Okay, we put a light coat on it. It's all covered real good. We do have a couple of little imperfections in it, but I'll hold it up and show it. And we're going to set this aside. Now we're going to do this in actual time because I want you to see the speed that I can go back and sand with. And I'm going to get the other elevator. Uh, ready to, to prime. And uh, I just used 320. And there's about six coats of dope on this, three before the paper and three after. And then you sand it until it's flat with the 320. normally run the camera while I'm sanding because it's rather boring but I want you to see the speed in which the DC 540 you know works it's about three dollars a can it takes about six cans to do an airplane okay so I've sanded it the first coat and I take the DC 540 and I spray the second elevator We're not spraying real thick, heavy coats. We just want to get it on there so it's all covered. And it's 100% compatible with any of the paints that you're using. Dope, urethane, enamel, doesn't matter. Okay, so I've sprayed the second one, and we're going to come back to the first one. Hmm. Dry to the touch. A little cool yet, so we'll give it a, a few seconds to... To dry off, but it's almost ready to sand. Now Frank McMillan, or Frank Williams at the Nationals this year said that he had tried it and he loves it and this is the reason. Now remember this is the first one I just painted and I'm going to sand it now with 320. And it's that fast.
So you wonder how you can finish an airplane and you know so fast it's knowing the right stuff. New materials are great, some of them. And what I do is I sand it to where it's translucent. I can just about see through it. So that gets most of the weight off. And that's part of the problem that I was worried about with the video show. I do not use silver on any of my paint jobs for the simple fact it has terrible adhesion. I know Wendy uses silver and a lot of guys use silver, but I use this primer. The thinners in this primer are real hot too, so they go down and grab. And of course we're going to do the nose because it's fiberglass and we need to get a good bond for paint. But in a matter of, uh, I don't think this video has been running 10 minutes yet, we got one side done. I'll try to zoom in and, and show you what I mean by translucent. I'm not sure it's going to show on camera, but I did want to show you the ease of DC540. And if you're one of the guys that just has to have a super opaque, you know, really solid paint job, you can go ahead and uh, go ahead and spray it till it's all light gray, like like an old car. But here we go. This is ready. This is ready to paint. So we'll zoom in. And that's basically what I mean by translucent. You can see just about see through it. Ready for your first coat of white or red or whatever color you're going to do. The lighter, uh, more opaque colors probably should be should be top coated with a you know solid color and if if the airplane is light enough when I get it all together I'll go ahead and stand back and dust the whole airplane just to get a light solid color on it it doesn't add any you know much weight when you do that but it sure makes covering the uh, the paint covering much easier but that's basically how I get a uh, a super nice paint job so quick I like to talk about I like to talk about some of the problems I had with this paint paint job and I'm going to Wix today to get a coat a quart, a gallon of the uh, regular paint thinner I've been using I ran out of the uh, Randolph thinner and I've been using the 3608s it's not hot enough and the reason why I say that is, is I applied the paper in, in a few spots with that dope with that thin with that and it doesn't have the uh, the bite that it needs to bind from one coat to the next through the paper and the paper's lifting off and I had that problem back here if you remember I told you I had stripped this off because the paper was lifting off well, I figured out the thinner is not hot enough, so before we go much farther, I'm going to go get the right stuff. It's, it'll cost me a few hours, a few hours drive, and 50 bucks, but uh, in the long run, it'll save quite a bit of headache, because <clears throat> already this morning I've repaired this side here where I put the silk pen on yesterday and it had lifted off because the thinner not being hot enough and I just don't want to chance dissimilar products so I'll go get the right stuff.
Let's put another coat of the DC 540 on this. This is the second coat. Not really necessary, but like I said, I want a super nice job on this airplane, so we'll sand it out again. And I see a spot there I need to put some of the uh, 3M putty on. I'll get a close-up of this, what it looks like with the primer on it. And I do, usually do one side at a time. And it looks like plastic already. Like I said, I'm not sure this is going to show the uh, quality on the video, but it is very, very smooth and covered. It looks like a piece of plastic. I see it has a few dimples in it. I'll have to get a small block and block sand it and keep massaging it until it's absolutely perfect. But that gives you a, an idea on the Colorline DC540. It's the best product I've ever used bar none. That includes the Aerogloss uh, products. Th that stuff there. And, and trust me, I asked the guys at Napa, I said, when are they going to discontinue, th continue this? Because when they're getting ready to discontinue it, I'll buy a truckload of it. Because this is the greatest and, and uh, anything that ever works they discontinue. Let's see what's in this. Uh, cap indicates I might have to get an MSDS on it. First aid. Doesn't say. But I can smell it has tooling in it. I can't believe they don't have a ingredients on it. So what we can get an MSDS on it and see exactly what's in it, but I think there's tooling in it. And I know that the, uh, that the uh, powder in it, the zinc stearate or baby powder or talcum or whatever's in it, is the greatest because it, it doesn't feel oily. Now remember, this is the second one we did. We did the first one again, and I've been talking, blabbing. This is the first one or the second one. So let's sand it out for the second coat. Three twenty three M wet and dry paper is what I use for this. You don't really need anything you don't need to use six hundred. Leave it some tooth to bite from coat to coat. I'll go ahead and post this up on the internet before I go take the drive to Wix today. And let's see what kind of response I get on the DC 540. I know that a lot of people have start, are starting to switch to it. And trust me, when they start selling it, they will quit making it. So, I, you know, that's just the way it is. It's the tree hugger nuts. There was lead in paint when I was a kid. You don't eat paint. Okay. Okay, that was a quick sand out on the second one. Let's take a look at that. Quick sand out on the second one. Sands like butter. We'll give it another coat. And uh, I'll sand it out one more time. And then before I'm ready to paint, I'll sand the whole thing till it's translucent. But it's being a cameraman and the uh, narrator is very difficult. Yeah, this is going to take another sanding. It's got some 
got some dimples in it. To do a nice Nat style paint job, it cost about $250 for material. Maybe a little more. So don't be discouraged when you're spending all that money. Anyway, that's the second coat on that piece. And like I say, it's not perfect, but the first one on the second coat is ready to sand again. So it's back and forth, back and forth, and this one's real nice. I think I'll I'll just wait until it's uh let's use some of this green putty here. I got a dimple that's not gonna come out, so I'll give a demo on that. If I can find it. stuff that I used to use but watching windy videos and he doesn't recommend it but if you get the number real quick off the uh, off his video it's a 05096 3M product acryl green spot putty don't use much of this because this tube is about five pounds so what I do is, is I take some of this Acryl putty. Get the first out of it because it's a hard lump. Put it on a spatula. And I get a razor blade as a trowel. A little bit on the razor blade. Let's see, where's that spot there? Now? This is not structural, it's only paint. <laughs> so I had one little spot up here that needed filled, and that's basically all we're gonna do. Oh, here's one here. And the nice thing about this stuff, it dries as fast as 540. So you ain't gotta wait all day for stuff to dry. No more epoxylite for me. It's all superfill. I think I'll get another can of superfill while I'm over there today too. It's it's cheap, and I want nice fillets on this. So instead of using old stuff, I use new. I see a lot of guys, or talk to a lot of guys at the Nats this year that are having all kinds of paint problems and the only reason why there's a paint problem is you're not thinking just like I, I told you about the problem that I had with the uh, with the paper today I know it's the thinner so I gotta go get new thinner okay where are we at here oh this is the second one let's use up some of this other putty here on the second one. I was thinking that this would be a faster project than it's going to be, but it's not because I want it perfect. 20 pointer. It'll be uh because I don't need an airplane to fly. And I can take my time finishing it. Now I gotta go pick up my other project at the post office today. I'll have plenty to do so I can just tinker with this paint job until it is perfect. So far the fits are good on everything, so I'm happy with that. 
Okay, we uh, put that putty on there just a few minutes ago. And sand it off. I mean, what's in there is only... Paper thin. Remember, a paint job is not what you put on, it's how much you sand off. That looks real good. Ooh, feels good too. Everything's flat and disappears. I'm going to weigh this airplane and we're going to see exactly how much a finish weighs. I normally don't do that. I just paint them. Start counting the grams on the paint job. But when we get to 64, quit! Because I don't want to fly on 18,000 lines. Okay, this was from the second sand out, and uh, it's basically ready to paint, one side. The finish is never done, it's abandoned. Just get tired of, tired of sanding, I guess. If I had a smart, I'd have, I'd have had that thinner scent yesterday. Of course, I'm not sure it's cheaper to get it myself or have the UPS guy bring it. Okay, let's get a picture of what this looks like and then I'm going to paint it one more time. Then I'm going to go cut the camera and I'll, I'll load this video up. DC 540. Oh, let's get a picture of what she looks like. Not sure that it's, uh, not sure that you can see how nice it is, but. It is very, very smooth, very nice. So let's paint another coat on it. I'm going to let it dry. And that'll be the final coat that I put on this. And uh, the last coat will get sanded with uh, 400. And then we paint. So. And we're not where it's already dark. We don't, want, we don't need to paint there. So we're just painting the light spots to make it all the same color. Just trying not to add any weight. I better go get another case of DC 549. I think about it. In case they run out. Okay.
this was not a a wet coat over the whole thing. It was just a dust coat to to make it all even colored. But that's it. Ready for paint. So that's the uh, story on DC 540. So I'll post it up and see you in a short.